Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher, and this video of mine is a little different than what I usually do. It's not a sponsored video, but Vivor, and you've probably heard of them on YouTube, they have a website, vivor.com, so check them out. All kinds of tools and other merchandise on there. And although this video is not a sponsored video, they did give this to me so that I could do a review and tell you all about these annular cutters. Something new to me and something that is new to a lot of you. So let's take a look at what's inside this nice case. So what's inside the box? Six nice annular cutters. And by the way, annular simply means ring-shaped, and I'll put that definition at the end of this video. But there are six cutters here, starting with one inch, going on up to two inch, so I'll unwrap them, be right back, and we'll take a little closer look at them. Now here they are in their glory, and these annular cutters have a three-quarter straight shank on them with two flats. This is called a Weldon shank and it is really meant to be held in the appropriate holder on a magnetic type of drill. Now I do not have a magnet drill. I'll show you a picture of one right now. So I will have to hold these either in a collet or in a large chuck. But there are adapters available or you can make them and I may make one of those adapters in a future video. These are the magnetic drills that I just talked about, and these are designed to use that Weldon shank. And also in the case here are a couple Allen wrenches, and these are the ejector pins. It's kind of a pilot. It's pointed on the end, but it isn't meant, of course, to drill like on a, a hole saw. They fit in there like this. I will not be able to use these. These are used in conjunction with that magnetic base drill that I just talked about. And there would be a spring in here and that would allow you to eject the plug. We will not be able to do that. And I, as far as I understand, the flat on one side here allows lubricant or oil to get down to the spot where it should be as you're cutting and I won't be able to take care of that or be able to use that uh, feature at all. Now this picture is taken from the Vivor website and here are the sizes of the six cutters. One inch, one and one eighth, one and one fourth, one and one half, one and three quarter, and two inch diameter. The big advantage of annular cutters like this is that they do not reduce all of the material into chips. They drill a ring, literally, that's what annular means again, and the waste stock or the plug can be pushed out of here, so that cuts the amount of time down a lot when you're drilling. And it's similar in a way to a hole saw where there's a plug, only this is a, a much wider kerf. These produce an accurate hole and a hole with a very smooth surface finish. So those are the advantages and it's so much faster than drilling, boring, or using a hole saw. So let's step over to the Bridgeport mill and set one of these up and drill, let's say, a one inch hole in three quarter inch thick steel. Now you cannot use these, never use these in a handheld drill such as a big half inch drill. You need an adapter anyway, but that'll wrap you up into a knot. So they, these have to be used on stationary machines that are very rigid. You can't use these on standard drill presses like you might have in your shop. First of all, no way to hold them, but the drill that you might have in a home shop is, uh, does not have the power, it does not have the horsepower or the rigidity or the slow speed. We need a slow speed. Two, three, or four hundred RPM, not fifteen hundred. You'll burn them up in a moment. I'm at the Bridgeport Mill and this is three quarter inch thick steel, mild steel, and I would like to drill or form a hole or machine a hole inch and a half in diameter. Now that is no small job you know how long that would take to do by traditional methods. In fact, the way I would have to do it here in my shop is start with a starter drill, 
quarter inch pilot, half inch, maybe even another bit, and then work up to this is one and one eighth, and that's the largest twist drill that I have in my entire shop here, believe it or not. And then I would have to finish with a boring bar. Now that would take how long? I don't think it could be done in less than 30 or 45 minutes. But we are going to use this inch and a half Viver annular cutter. You have seen me in the past struggle with hole saws like this and that's a job too and and you wear these out so quickly and you can't get the chips out of there so it's, it's just not easy to use these on thicker metal and it, it isn't a good answer for you now admittedly I've never used one of these but I'm gonna go ahead and put it into an R8 3 quarter inch collet you can buy from your industrial supplier an adapter that will go from the 3 quarter inch Weldon to an R8 shank, but I do not have one, so this will go right into the collet, and I will be running this at about 200 RPM in back gears with plenty of oil. Here we go, about 200 RPM. I'll put a little oil on there to start with, and again, it's about 200 RPM. I am feeding by hand, almost like a drill press. We'll see how that works. I'm going to stop and clear the chips so you can see better. I have been told not to keep clearing it, that it should be done all in one fell swoop, but I like to get some of the chips out of there, and this is quite a bird's nest that is a little bit annoying. Okay, actual cutting time was probably about four minutes, although I did stop a couple of times and remove the bird's nest. As you can see here, it's, it is a mess and you don't want to have a rag around here or anything that might get caught. Now I will take the cutter out of the machine and the work out of the vise and we'll look at the hole and uh, examine the cutter as well. Now there will be all kinds of still pictures at the end of this video so make sure you check them out also look in the description and uh, there will be a link to their website as well as I think a discount code so check that all out this set is about hundred and sixty dollars approximately in price alright let's see what we got here I'll see how easily the plug can be removed. I do not want to damage the tip of this, so I maybe I should have used something else, but it is the ejection pin. And you know what? It's coming out a little easier, a lot easier than what the slug comes out of a, a hole saw. So there it is, and because of this plug or core, think we do not have to reduce all of this to chips. That's a pretty good chunk of steel right there. And the cutter looks good. I do not see any chipping or anything like that. Which I'm glad of. I did cause the belt to slip a couple times by feeding too hard. That I did notice. But that's my fault, probably. So look at the hole. And it's not a great finish, but certainly as good as any drilled hole. And then measuring it, remember this was one and a half inches. And by gosh, it's, you know, within a thousand, so it's, that's really good to know that it is that accurate. So that's pretty awesome. These are annular cutters. Now let's do another job using this on the lathe, but a smaller one. I'll use the one inch.
to make a bushing or a sleeve on the clothing lathe. Now again this hardened three-quarter welded shaft shank will have to be held in a big Jacob chuck and I mean a big one I think it's the 18N model so let me go ahead and set that up I'll be right back this is a short piece of inch and a half stress proof steel inch and a half diameter about one inch long and that will go in the three jaw chuck and the annular cutter is going to be held in this bodacious Jacob's chuck I, ball bearing I hope I can get it tight enough and the problem here is this is a hardened shank and these are hardened jaws and it does not and tend to grip very well I probably will be making an adapter that will fit uh, and do the job much better than this but this is again an experiment I'll get this tightened down real well and be right back That was approximately three minutes of actual cutting. And the work is just a little warm. So I'll get it cooled off and cleaned up and we'll examine it. All right, let's have a look here. I'll knock the plug out real quickly. Oh, that came out very easily. Again on the slug or plug or core I did not have to remove that uh, by the way of chips it's just a solid piece the cutter looks in good condition did you notice that the cutter did not slip in that chuck nor did the work slip in the three jaw lathe chuck this is these are going to be very useful and how often do we make big washers or spacers or bushings? This is such a quick way. I bet that I will use these cutters more for this type of application in the lathe than what I do in the milling machine. I'm really excited about this. Again, the finish isn't all that great, but it doesn't need to be for a washer. It did a very nice job, and I think I already said it was what two or three minutes of actual cutting time here and four or five for this bigger hole I probably could have fed faster or even used faster spindle speeds but I like to err on the side of slowness and preserving cutters rather than burning them up if you turn them blue you've ruined them well that completes the video I hope you enjoyed it and consider getting yourself a set of these annular cutters they are so awesome and you can see the results here. I remember that in the description of this video there will be links for Vivor for their products. Check that out if you're interested. Thank you to Vivor for sending these to me. I'll have a, you'll see them in a lot of other videos over the years, I'm sure. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.